Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the second Cancer full moon meeting in the circle of the meditation for the common good. Today we start the new cycle, working with the energy of both signs, Cancer and Leo. In this cycle, we start with invoking the vision of the unfolding divine plan using the opportunity of the Cancer Festival. And we will hold the tension of our group focus throughout the coming new moon, new moon where we will work with the energy of Leo, distributing and anchoring on the physical plane the vision of the unfolding plan and meditating seeds that will grow to become thought forms to inspire and lead humanity in its path of evolution. The topic that we will work in the Cancer Leo cycle is shared reality of initiation. Through empathy and compassion, we expand humanity's heart. This topic was uh, synthesized from ideas and impressions that were shared at the first quarter moon meeting last week, which uh, Tracy will share with you just in a minute. We will use the opportunity of this day of distribution of the energy of the Cancer Festival to meditate together, asking for guidance from our hierarchical brothers and sisters, invoking the vision and holding our chalice high and receptive for impressions to be precipitated and recognized by the group. Thank you for joining us today. And as we prepare to start our work today, I invite Birgit to sound the statement of purpose of the meditation for the common good. Over to you, Birgit. Thank you, Alexander. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and cherish diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an Asramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare for the way. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. And over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Birgitta. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, as Alexander said, uh, at this time, I will be reading the seed thoughts that came from our first quarter moon meeting for from all who attended. 
Um, and that is, like Alexander said, how we come up with our topic for the cycle. So let me begin. First seed thought. Let the note of the vision sound strongly and vibrantly, inspiring the masses of humanity to move to the future of sharing, brotherhood, and freedom. Second seed thought. Try to always share the truth of the soul. Seed thought number three. Empathy developed through individual experience, effort, and the desire to understand others. Number four. Empathy reveals the human conditioning interdependence expressed as the reciprocity of mutual exchange. Number five, let us each share our positive attributes with our human family. Number six, return to the heart. Number seven, the first step for human, the human in us all and humanity in general may be empathy leading eventually to true compassion. We are all sharing an amazing experience right now on this planet Earth and all its kingdoms and the planet itself. We are sharing initiation. And we have all chosen to go through this experience together. This is quite a sharing. Number eight, following divine law and order and being a part of soul light, receiving, loving, sharing silence. And our last seed thought, may the group will love, and intuition bring the light to our shared reality and support the ways to manifest it. And now we will move on to our meditation for today that will be led by Alexander. So over to you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Brigitte. Each month we take turns rotating our focalizing responsibility. So this month it's, I'm holding this hat of focalizer. Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning in the, the introduction is that uh, through each cycle, we focus on one of the three themes that are named as a prerequisites for the reappearance of the Christ. 
and and the signs of the fixed cross of which Leo is a part. We focus on the theme introducing the principle of sharing into all fields of human endeavors. And as the main focus of our work is magnetization of thought forms and distributing that radiance of those thoughts forms into human family, we focus in our work in the on the meditation at the time of the new moon. So today we are preparing for that meditation by invoking the vision of the unfolding plan. So let us begin. We align inwardly towards the light of the soul. As the soul incarnated, we recognize presence of each other's soul light, connecting with the light and love and will to good. We see our group as a circle of loving, radiating light. We visualize group hearts in the group center. Radiating, pulsating light of the group chalice. using creative imagination and as an act of will, we build the group Rainbow Bridge, group Antakarana. Extending towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the ashram of the Christ, We tune to the higher potency of this ashram.
expanding our group capacity. We recognize our position on the periphery of the ashram. We open our group perception to the energy emanating from the sign cancer. We invoke the reception, recept group receptivity to the vision of the unfolding divine plan. We meditate on the topic of cancer Leo cycle, share it reality of initiation through empathy and compassion. We expand humanity's heart. Share it reality of initiation. Through empathy and compassion, we expand humanity's heart.
let us reflect on the following questions. How can I, as a disciple, further expand my heart to radiate compassion to all living beings? What does this mean in the practice of daily living? How can I, as a disciple, further expand my heart to radiate compassion to all living beings? What does this mean in the practice of daily living? It is said that esoteric groups form the heart center of the new group of world servers. How can the esoteric community be more effective in its function in distributing the energy of life to the entire organism of the world service group? It is said that esoteric groups form the heart center of the new group of world service. How can the esoteric community be more effective in its function in distributing the energy of life to the entire organism of the world service group?
we know that humanity is undergoing the fire of the first initiation of soul awakening. What can support this process of reorientation from matter to soul? We know that humanity is undergoing the fire of the first initiation of the soul awakening. What can support this process of reorientation from matter to soul? How can esoteric groups contribute to making the vision of the unfolding divine plan more magnetic for humanity? How can esoteric groups contribute to making the vision of the unfolding divine plan more magnetic for humanity?
we invoke hierarchical inspiration and guidance as we receive impressions in our group chalice. Let us gently refocus on the group mental plane, allowing impressions to find adequate expression in the mental substance. Let us sound Gayatri, closing our meditation. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by the disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, everyone. Let us hold a few more moments in silence to write down our impressions before we open our time of sharing. Also, please note that there is a community impressions board that is available on our homepage, uh, the 2025initiative.org website where we can, where we extend an open invitation uh, to continue sharing from our impressions and insights uh, across the next few weeks, uh, entering into the uh, new moon as we prepare for that uh, meditation in a couple of weeks. So let's just take a few more moments of silence. Thank you. Oh, also the Community Impressions Board uh, website is in the chat box. Uh, Alexander placed it there so you can just click on that and uh, you'll be right in the Impressions Board where you can write your thoughts and reflections. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's time now where we are uh, asked to uh, share with the group our insights and reflections and uh, anything that's come to us uh, through this meditation or up to this point um, on the topic and the questions that Alexander posited for us. Uh, in the meditation. So please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, share. 
and then wait maybe a few moments before the next person unmutes and shares. So it gives good time for us to uh, percolate what has been said. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This, this month is, and our focus this month is, is really extraordinary. And this meditation was just that. Um, you know, I think of all of us as being in this incarnation with great, great purpose. We came in with a deep aspiration and urge to serve at very important levels um, because the human because humanity is approaching their first initiation we come here with real intention to be a part of that and i know all of us spend an unusual amount uh, unusual amount of time in meditation and in group meditation and in this, we have learned and we know that the subjective influence that we have on the universal consciousness and on the body of humanity as one soul in which we are a part of is very, very real. And that truth um, is, is, is truly what, we'll, what, what we're doing the most, I believe, effectively at this point in time. Um, it is not something that we see the results from, and actually we're not supposed to have any anticipation of what those results actually are. Um, but we come to that place of subjective group service wholeheartedly, with love, with very strong, powerful intentions to connect with the greater soul of the one life. And in that solitude, we create solidarity. And that solidarity brings the generosity that is the empathy and the understanding that is compassion. And, and through that very powerful energy of love, we are doing everything that these questions are asking us. We take that into our physical incarnation by becoming what we know and leading by example, which requires enormous forgiveness from all of us to each other and to ourselves. And I am constantly remembering that we reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding, that understanding being compassion and the active use of that compassion at that subjective level to bring the divine plan into manifestation and all of our brothers and sisters wholeheartedly being a part of that. Uh, I would like to follow Andrea because I think um, as her words came out, they were words that we all held in our hearts. Um, we have become a telepathic unit in the sense that, uh, just as Andrea said, we are here for a purpose and we know that purpose is to act as one. We talk about oneness, but in fact, um, now is the time for us to demonstrate that oneness um, through the heart service that we all em embrace and hold. Uh, and no matter how we do that, we know that we, we do that together as one. Um, 
so for instance, uh, as Andrea said, we are in many groups together, but we are all in those many groups together. Um, there is much more substance to this field that we hold as Group Soul, as the Ajna Center, as the new group of world servers. Um, we have become that oneness. We talk about shared initiation. Part of the shared initiation is our own. We have developed ourselves as a center of light. Uh, we don't have to give it a number. So we are, are here for humanity's initiation, but also our own. We're here for Gaia's initiation. We're here for the Logos, the planetary Logos is initiation. Uh, our father, I mean, look at, you know, with eyes open, look at where we stand. Um, you know, it really is quite uh, a miracle, you know, really, uh, that we are given this work. And in looking out at what is happening in the world, it really struck me that we hold an anchor in the midst of chaos. We stand there really um, to bring through that love, to uh, bring through that empathy, to bring through that holding that will support the swirls that are working around us and the pain and all that. The, the question that comes forth of how do we help humanity go through the first initiation um, by understanding the pain, by, by holding the love, by bringing through those higher energies that we can now connect with. Um, these questions are a perfect time for this. Cancer moving into Leo. I mean, if you looked at it, you know, the full moon at 29 degrees, and now we're moving into Cancer at zero. You know, it wasn't... Uh, an ending at a beginning. It was a true synthesis and emerging. I looked at the um, the rulers of cancer, all Neptune at various levels. And you look at the rulers of uh, Leo, all the suns. And here was that one point that we all held together where it wasn't an ending and a beginning, it was emerging. So we're, we're part of a new synthesis that is happening. Um, and I think that uh, we we move forward together as one. We support each other as one. We come together at those critical times um, to meditate, to bring through energies together, because as one, we really uh, hold a light and an important point in terms of uh, working with hierarchy to support humanity and to actually work at the synthesis of them both. So thank you. How wonderful to not only sense both of you again, but uh, to hear your voices again. Um, um, the one thing I was thinking of uh, in line with what we've been saying is that um, as our intuition grows, we see more and more light um, in everything around us. And I think that um, um, as we know, that negates judgment, negative judgments, and so forth, and and that that seeing that light um, every day, looking for that light, I'm going to try to make that as an exercise. I think to consciously be looking for that light in everyone I uh, come in touch with. Thank you.
hello everyone. Um, I think most of what I had uh, thought has been already put forward. Um, I've put that we need to consider what human and lower kingdom traits annoy us and we don't tend to like and resolve to be more expansive in acceptance of differences and the telepathy that Andrea mentioned yes um, if we could develop telepathy I think our job would be made a lot easier and we need I think as uh, Judy says we need to also set the right example for people and if we can demonstrate success in our work in any way and we will find we will be more successful and um, have greater cooperation with humanity thanks Yeah, I think I'd just like to add, because everybody's saying, again, um, I think we're all telepathically connected, <laughs> um, because I was thinking the same thing that everybody's already shared. Um, I think the only thing I, I would like to bring to this is um, just our, our focus. I mean, we're already connecting at the heart level. We're connecting at the, on the mental planes. Um, we're focusing together as a group. We're connecting with the world servers group in general and with the hierarchy. The only thing um, that I try to do in, in a daily practice is, is just focus or not really focus, but just make it a habit of connecting um, both worlds, living in both worlds both the spirit world and the world of matter equally. Just remembering, I think it's more remembering every day that we are a part of both worlds and bringing that um, more and more into our daily practice and reality. So thank you. Go ahead, Andrea. Uh, I think that's uh, raised hands uh, that Andrea had was from before. Yeah. Um, okay, can I say? Mm -hmm. Please. Um, you know, I, I mean, we were talking about that uh, not having, not expecting the result. Um, I deeply agree with that. Yet at the same time, when we are working with the matter, the direction of that process, I think it is one of the most important things. We incarnate, manifest in the matter. And then the direction. 
towards the soul or towards more work would matter. And when I'm thinking about the work of disciples, it is for people on a spiritual path or people who are touched by the soul already. It's um, really important for us to um, to see where, where things are going. What is the real purpose of whatever we're doing? And see to that, that the purpose is Leo. The purpose is in the path of the soul, of evolutionary path of the soul. And that I think concerns like every everyday living and our service and our practice and our work with the teaching and um, you name it, basically everything. Are we treating, you know, the text that we're reading as something material that has like has its own you know, value and uh, we hold down to that value of the words or we use the value of the words and move forward with it or well, however <laughs> direction move with it develop it through our life, through our practice. And then we start reading and quoting from a different perspective. That's humanity. It used to be that material things were created for the beauty, for beauty to uh, honor the divine. But slowly we came to the point of material possession and for material possession, for more material possession. And I think right now <clears throat> we're on the precipice of shifting that, you know, shifting that back to the meaning of the process, meaning of that creations, those creations. And I think this energy, uh, this Cancer Leo energy, requires the will, the Leo will energy to shift towards the soul and to love that process, not just to force, but to love that process. And through love comes this understanding. And through will comes this understanding of what can or cannot be. So we don't, we serve and not exact due service. You know? well, I think we can use this energy, not even on a daily basis, <laughs> but almost every minute of our existence. As we work in the matter, as we work in this, manifested world and our goal is to spiritualize it and give and de deliver that energy to a different kingdom and be that so that's that, that those are the thoughts thank you Oh, so um, many. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you go. You go ahead. Okay. Um, I was going to say, Katya, that um, what you said have brought up so many thoughts. Um, you know, we do need to direct the energies uh, through through our lives, through spiritual living. But um, it's it's certainly not we the personality. It is we the soul. Um, we can't assume to know unless we can uh, really merge with hierarchy and understand the plan. Then we really know where to direct our thoughts. Um, 
and I look at the last question and it says making a vision and to, I've, I've been really pondering that for a while. Um, how do we really envision the plan? And uh, I think the first step is to um, align and to try to uh, make telepathic connection with hierarchy so that the vision that comes through us uh, is inspiration, is, is the plan itself. Um, for a while in our Sunday group, um, we have been connecting regularly with hierarchy and most recently hierarchy is there when uh, the 17 sustainable goals are read. And we met yesterday on the full moon of cancer and hierarchy was there, but they were there in a different way. They were there in really embodied substance. And we went through the goals and all of a sudden it was like a snap. And I was going across the lands and just seeing all the goals as having been achieved. And if you know the 17 goals, it really, it, it's brotherhood in communities, it's right relationships, it's decent work, it's clean waters, it's uh, the culture of peace. It just goes on. And I just, it, it totally unfolded before me as we did these visions. And I realized that this was the aspiration of humanity. And this in fact was the plan. This was what heaven would look like. It just, I mean, it all came at once and the energy was coming through me. And in terms of when will it, you know, this is the end maybe of the Aquarian age or maybe ages beyond that even. Um, but there was an understanding that when I stepped back the vision was given to me, but then I, as a worker, need to be able to hold the vision. So it's like uh, to understand what is a vision versus I want this person to win an election or that. It really has to be that higher note of what is to come forth. And it's, it's really, I mean, I've been doing this meditation for years, and this is the first time all the pieces just fell together. And I realized this is, you know, this is the vision. This is the plan. This is what we need. To, you know, this is an understanding of how um, with the higher impress, we can envision a reality uh, that encompasses all of those things that we know in our hearts are part of divine purpose. Uh, but we can't we really have to be able to get to that higher note so we in fact know where and how to direct the energies um, so that that comes through. So thank you. Yeah, Judy, I think where where to hold and, and encompass that energy, what came to me was um, we don't even need to know how it's going to come apart. It's a matter of holding a vibration, kind of like when you do in with esoteric healing, you just hold the vibration of the heart and, and everything around it comes up to match that that energy. We talk about empathy and compassion. Those are Buddhic energies. And I don't think, I think it's not a matter of saying, well, we want to do clean water and we want to do, um, everybody has food. And I think if we hold the vibration of compassion, we hold the vibration, uh, that frequency, um, they say that the energies try and match that and they talk about um in quantum physics they talk about that uh people holding a specific um energy or thought that has a higher vibration kind of thing um because there's so many different thoughts there's so many different things that create heaven on earth and the most significant thing to me because we're all talking about energy and um, and frequency and vibration is just to 
if we all hold within us the energy of love and we focus on that energy through our deeds of compassion and empathy or whatever, it automatically raises the energy around you and it magnetize, you know, that's a magnetic energy. So um, energy follows thought and our thoughts and our heart vibration create that. So thank you. Um, and in our in our everyday lives, as we do that, um, in uh, the things you're saying, Tracy and Judy, um, seeing and also seeing that light in everyone, uh, that soul light, I think that um, holding that energy also um, in our lives helps people around us to see truth. Uh, it's, it's so easy in relationships to not value truth and uh, whatever the relationship. And I think that's another, another aspect of what we're talking about is, is it, it over time enables people to see truth. Thank you, friends. Let us continue holding the attention of the group focus on this cycle topic, the shared initiation, and expanding part of humanity. And we will have opportunity to continue our sharing next week on Tuesday. July 30th for at our quarter moon meeting at uh, 6.30 GMT, which is 2.30 Eastern time. And then another time to bring our impressions together into the group chalice at the time of the new moon meeting on August 6th on Tuesday at 6 p.m. GMT, 2 p.m. Eastern. So please... Take note of this uh, schedule. There was change in the schedule as it was previously announced. So please let us continue to our subjective work. And uh, if anyone would like to close us today by sounding a mantra, please. The mantra of the great invocation, Alan. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all human rooms. The purpose which the masters know and search. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.